In this video we're going to make a parallax background effect in Unity that also repeats to Infinity. It will be a simple script with a single field that we can add to as many backgrounds as we want to achieve our desired effect. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is our goal. Over here I have a simple platformer character, and you can see the background. Now as I move, yep there you go, there's a very nice effect where the background is split into different layers and each layer moves a different amount. So as I move left, right or jump, you can see them all moving at a different amount for a really great effect, giving the illusion of 3D. We're also going to make the effect deal with background scrolling so we end up with an infinite background. So as I keep moving, the background will never ever end. You can see here in the editor, there's my camera preview, and here I can move the camera, and no matter how much I move the camera, you can see all of the background sprites being moved alongside it, so they'll look seamlessly. And I have these two sprites, the trees and the mountains, also perfectly repeating on the horizontal axis, and then I have the clouds, which repeat horizontally, but also vertically. So just like this, we have a floor in there, and we can go anywhere, and our visuals always look perfect. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in my starting scene. All I have is some basic platformer movement with no background. All right, so first let's add our backgrounds. Over here on the project files, I have these background textures. Essentially, each one will be one level of the parallax effect. So let's drag them onto our scene. Okay, there they are, now let's sort them. Okay, so they are all basically sorted. So the trees are on minus 10, then behind it we have the mountains on order in layer minus 20, and then we have the clouds right on top. Now the one missing is the background. Now this one is just a simple image. There it is, now this one is meant to be a simple image that will not have the parallax effect. So since we don't want this one to move at all, we can simply make it a child of the camera. And let's also make sure that these sprites that we dragged are all on Z of zero. All right, so far so good. So over here we have our sprites. Let's run our game. And yep, there it is, and we have our character right here. Then behind it we have the trees, the mountains, and over there the clouds. All right, so everything is working correctly so far. Now let's make our script, so a new c -sharp script, let's call this the Parallax Background and we're going to add it to our three backgrounds, so just add them on there, okay. Now in here, the way the Parallax effect works is essentially we're going to move the background alongside the camera, but a bit less for each level. So let's make a field to have our camera transform. Now here we can make this a reference that we could drag in the editor, but for most cases we're going to be working with the main camera so we can simply grab it automatically. So make a start function and in here we're going to simply set the camera transform to be on the camera.main. Alright, so there it is, we automatically capture the main camera. Now let's make an update. And in here we need to figure out how much the camera has moved. So that means we need to store the last camera move position. So we store a vector3 for our camera position, the last camera position. Then on start, we set it to where it is right now. So the transform.position, okay. And now here on our update, now we know the previous camera position and we can find out the current camera position. So if we do some math, we have our delta movement. So just like this, we have how much the camera has moved since the previous frame. And in order to make sure that this runs after the camera has moved, we can run this on the late update instead of just update. Okay, so we can simply take this movement and add it to this background transform position. So we modify transform.position by our delta movement. And then afterwards, we need to make sure to reset our last camera position to the current camera position. All right, so just like this, we should be able to see our background correctly following the camera. Let's test. Okay, here we are. Now, as I move, 
And yep, there you go, the background is correctly following the camera, so it doesn't look like there's any movement whatsoever. Alright, so far so good. Now obviously we don't want all the backgrounds to follow the camera perfectly, so here when we add our delta movement, we're going to multiply it by a certain value. So we have a certain effect multiplier and we multiply it by our delta movement. So in this case with 0.5 it means that this background will move half of the movement of the actual camera. So if the camera moves 10 units this one will move 5. Let's test. Okay here we are now as I move and there you go you can see that it is no longer perfectly following the camera but lagging a bit behind. Alright awesome here it is our very nice effect. So just like this our effect is working great with a nice parallax effect both horizontally and vertically. Okay, so let's go back to the code. In here, instead of hard coding a effect multiplier, let's make it as a field that we can easily edit. So we make a serialized field for our float for the parallax effect multiplier. And we simply use this one, okay. So now we can go into the editor. So here we have the tree selected and there it is, there's our field. So let's put the trees at 0.4 and then the mountains which are behind it Let's put it at 0.6. So the trees should look like they're moving more than the mountains. Let's test. Okay, here we are, and as I move, and yep, there you go, the trees are moving a lot more than the mountains are. So just like that, we already have a very nice parallax effect. Let's also add a little bit onto the clouds. And yep, there it is, we have our trees moving a certain amount, the mountains another amount, and the clouds another amount. So just like this, we have our effect nicely working. The backgrounds are moving alongside the camera, but by different amounts, giving this very cool illusion. Right, awesome. So just like this, our effect is working great with a very nice parallax effect, both horizontally, but also vertically. However, for a lot of games, it makes more sense to have a different effect amount for the horizontal and the vertical movement. So let's go into our script. In here, we're just using a float and multiplying it by the delta movement, and we can simply instead use a vector two. So here, let's apply our multiplier to the x and the y. Okay, so just like that, we should be able to have independent values for the x and the y. Let's see. Here in the editor, now we have a vector2 for our effect multiplier. So let's set it. All right, so here I've set it. So the trees have 0 0.4, 0 0.1. The mountains have 0 0.6, 0 0.3. And finally, the clouds have 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Let's see. Okay, so here we are. And if we move left and right, yep, the effect still works exactly the same. So the trees move a lot more than the mountains. And if I jump, and there you go, now we have a much different vertical movement on the parallax effect being applied. So previously we would have an issue where the mountains would move too much and we could see the background behind it, and now we don't have that issue since we have the parallax effect on the vertical axis as much smaller than the horizontal one. So just like this, here we have a really great effect that we can easily modify. All right, awesome. So like this, the effect is working correctly. However, let's try to move to the right, and there you go, we have our issue. Right there, the mountains simply end. So let's make our script automatically handle infinite backgrounds as well. For that, we first go here into our hierarchy, and here for our sprites, instead of having them be on the draw mode simple, we need to swap it out into be tiled. So just like this, for example, let's select the mountains, put them on tiled, and there you go, the mountain ends right there. And if I keep pushing it, there you go, it repeats very nicely. So just like that, it keeps going on forever. So just like this, we can drag our size to make it repeat on the left and on the right. And now the way we're going to have an infinite background is we need to make it at least the size of three screens. So just drag it pretty much like this and do the same for all of them. Okay, so they are sized to match at least three screens. Now the reason we need three is because as we move to the right, as we go past the texture size, we're going to shift the entire texture to the right by the exact amount. So when we reach one of the sides, the texture will simply move, and then we reach again, moves again, and so on and so forth. So the only complex part to do with this has to do with the texture size. Okay, so let's make our script handle our logic. So here the first thing we need is to figure out our texture unit size. So to figure out that, let's grab our sprite render. So here we have our sprite texture as well as the pixels per unit. All 
Okay, so we grab our sprite from the sprite render, we grab the texture on that sprite, and then we calculate the texture unit size by dividing the width by our pixels per unit. So let's just rename this, put an X on the end to make sure this is only the unit size on the X. Then later we're going to work on the Y. So here on our late update, after we move this transform, we need to test the difference between this transform position and the current camera position. So if the difference between the camera position and this transform position, if that difference is bigger than our texture unit size, then we've moved past by more than our texture size, so we can relocate our transform and make it look seamless. So what we're going to do is modify our transform.position to be based on the camera position, and in this case, keep the same Y position. All right, so as the camera moves away, we replace it back on a new position. However, just like this, it will be exactly on top of the camera, which might not be exact, so we also need to calculate our offset position. So we get the remainder of the position based on our texture unit size. Then we put it on top of the camera plus our offset. Okay, so this might seem complex, but it'll all make sense when you see it in action, so let's see. Here in the editor, let's just try out moving the trees. So let's disable the clouds and the mountains. And in here, let's make sure we set up our texture in order to be able to see the seam. So there it is, just like that, there it is. So we will be able to see this, and then it should look exactly the same as the texture moves forward. Let's see. Okay, so here we are. There's the game view and the scene view. And as we move forward, you can see the texture moves forward, okay. And now as we reach the end, and we should be able to see the seam. Okay, there it is. Now as I pass it, it should be able to have the texture teleport to the right. However, when it does, the seam should flawlessly match perfectly. So we should not be able to see, for example, this tree snap to a different position. So let's see, as I move forward, there you go, there you go, move a bit more, and there you go, exactly like that. So this one did not seem like it moved, but the whole texture moved. So I can keep going, and you can see on the scene view, as we reach the end, it snaps forward, and there you go, just like this, we have an infinite scrolling background. So right now we're only dealing with the positive, and if we go backwards, you'll be able to see that it does not snap. So there you go, let's fix that. The fix is extremely simple, since here we're dealing with position differences. All we really need to know is do a mathaf.absolute to make sure that this one is positive, then we test against the texture unit size, then the offset will be positive or negative and everything works. So let's test. Okay, here I am, let's move to the right and we'll be able to see the seam and then, yep, it snaps perfectly into position. Now go into the left and we are reaching the end and as we reach the end, that one is empty and yep, there you go, it correctly moved and looks perfect. All right, so now obviously we should not be able to see the seam. So in order to do that, all we need to do is increase our bright size so back in the editor, that is why we need to have this be the size of more than three times our screen size. So here in the inspector, we have a width of 800, and let's just put 2000 instead. All right, so there it is. That's more than big enough in order to not be able to tell the seams. So let's test. Okay, here we are with the game view and the scene view. Let's move to the right and keep going. And after a while, yep, there you go. The texture snapped into a new position, but we could not tell the difference from the game view. So as you can see on the game view, it always looks perfect and you can never tell that something has changed. And yep, there you go, exactly like that. So here on the scene view, I can manually move the camera. So as I move to the left, you can see it constantly, no matter where I put my camera, it constantly snaps into position and it's always visible. All right, awesome. Let's enable the other textures. Okay, here we are with all the textures and the parallax effect is working. Now moving really fast and I can keep going and going and going and there you go. The textures never end and we can keep going on for infinity. All right, so here it is and it looks great. We can pause and look at the scene view in here and we can move the main camera and there you go. It constantly moves no matter where I place the camera, the textures are always behind it. All right, awesome. So this looks great, and in this case, this is all we need. We have it being infinite on the left and on the right side. However, if we move up and down, there you go, we don't have any infinity working. So in this case, we don't need it, but in order to make our class nice and robust, let's make sure we deal with that as well. So here, it's very simple. We pretty much just copy the exact same logic.
Okay, so here it is. I pretty much just duplicated the exact same logic. So we have a unit size on the X and on the Y. On the Y, we simply use the height instead of the width. And then we have the exact same thing working, except all of them on the Y. So here we are, and now the mountains and trees, let's just hide them since these are not supposed to be repeatable. And let's make sure the logic works with our clouds. So in here, let's make it big enough in order to not see the seams. And there you go, just like that. Now let's test. Okay, so here we are with the camera. And now if I move up, and yep, there you go, the sprite changed position and we cannot see the seam at all on our game view. So there you go, now we can move the camera anywhere on the X, on the Y, and everything looks perfect. There you go, the background is always there and always perfect. Okay, so here I just added two more booleans for infinite horizontal and vertical. And here we just test those in order to move it or not. And here I made the clouds infinite on the horizontal and vertical, but the mountains and trees only infinite on the horizontal. So here is the camera, and if I move around from left to right, you can see over there on the preview, it looks very nice. Everything never ends, so just like that. And if I move up, yep, there you go, the clouds repeat, but the other two stay down there. So if I go down here, yep, I'm on the floor, and over here, I'm all the way up here. So just like this, this effect works perfectly if you had a platformer that was constantly moving up. So this very simple script is very versatile and can be applied to whatever type of parallax effect best suits your game. And again, here it is in-game, I have my character, I'm moving him around, and all of the textures are moving at different speeds. So we have currently the foreground, then we have the trees, and we have the mountains, and the clouds. And I can move an infinite amount on either direction, up, down, left, right, and everything works perfectly. As always, you can download the Project Files and Utilities from UnityCodeMonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.